All right, here we go with chapter five. I'm going to break this uh, into two parts. So this will be part one of estimating project times and costs. Now, with uh, with the project scope statement and the WBS completed, you now have the information to forecast the project timeline and and the cost of the cost of the project. So um, the estimating process may actually be done several times at at the beginning of the project and actually updated throughout the life of the project as it uh, as the project progresses. There's uh, two types of estimates. There is the top-down method, which is a macro type estimate. Now this is typically done at the very beginning, often before the WBS is actually developed. It is mostly used to present the justification of the project, uh, most often using past data on other projects or high-level estimate based on some preliminary data gathered on the project. Bottom-up estimate is a, is a micro type of estimate. Uh, this really requires having the WBS completed, understanding what the work packages are. Uh, the estimates are done based on, on the work packages in the WBS and typically done by the people that will actually do the work. In this slide, we list uh, some of the different uh, reasons why uh, it's important to estimate the times and the costs. The early estimates will generally be a macro estimate to determine if the project is worth doing or if the organization has sufficient funds to do the project. Uh, later estimates will be uh, more detailed, a micro type of estimate. Um, to, uh, to give uh, project timelines and costs um, so that they can understand the cash flow needs, uh, be able to schedule resources, and provide a uh, baseline for measuring project process, uh, progress. Now, there are different factors influencing the quality of the estimates, and we'll go through some of those here. Um, first is the uh, planning horizon. Planning horizon is basically the, the the time uh, before the project will start. So, you know, if a project is is not due to start for another year, the quality of the estimate may um, uh, may be low because of different things like uh, uh, labor rates, uh, material costs, availability of resources, things like that. So, uh, technology that, that's available. So, so you'll so your, your the quality of your estimate will be um, will be a little off based on the, the length of time before the project even begins. Project duration is another one and, and kind of similar. As the project progresses, if, if the duration is, is, is a long duration type project, a project that's going to take a year or two, um, again, labor rates, technology, um, uh, material costs are all factors in the quality of this estimate. Now, another factor influencing the quality of estimates is people. Uh, you've got uh, people providing the estimates uh, for these for these tasks. So uh, a lot uh, depends on, on their skill sets and, and how much they know about the processes or the tasks involved. So um, so people can provide uh, can be a, a major factor uh, influencing the quality of, of estimates. Uh, project and organizational type. Uh, of structure can be another one. Uh, there's uh, different organizational structures, uh, functional, projectized, matrix, that uh, can influence the, the timeline and the cost. In a functional organization, there is no dedicated project manager or project team. They're all pulled from the different functions in, in the organization. These people have their normal daily activities and the project is basically an extracurricular type of activity, so you you know that the project times and 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 uh, and, and the cost will uh, will increase. In a projectized type organization, uh, you've got a dedicated project manager, project team. So in those cases, you're going to have more dedication to the project, and uh, and you can expect the timelines and the cost to be a little shorter. Now, padding estimates is another factor influencing the quality of estimates. 
we we don't want um, the people giving you the estimates for the uh, for the tasks to pad that. Uh, I've had this happen where I'll ask a field engineer how long it will take to do a certain task, and they'll give me um, a padded estimate based on uh, the fact that they understand things will ha come up and and will that will affect their a bit of availability and their ability to get the, the task done. But we don't want to add that into the, the estimate. We don't want uh, any of those factors to, to be uh, put into, uh, into the estimate. So we don't like padding estimates. Organizational culture uh, will really influence whether they want accurate or inaccurate type of of um, of estimates, and in most cases, most organizations are going to want the most accurate type of of estimate that they that they can get because uh, it is really tough to to get money out of the organization for these projects. So they want to be very accurate on that. Then there's some other non-project type type of factors: equipment downtime, national holidays, vacations, priorities, uh, things like that as well. So we'll go through some guidelines for um, estimating times and costs and resources. As mentioned earlier, um, you need to have people familiar with the tasks making the estimates. And if possible, get several people to give estimates so that you really get a, a, a good pool of, of information. Uh, always base the estimates on normal conditions. Uh, it's too really too hard to predict what may happen to affect the estimate, you'll look at uh, conditions that could affect the project later and when you do your risk assessment and that sort of thing. Um, each task should be estimated independently of other tasks. Now, as you do these projects, you'll, you'll find that these many tasks are interdependent. Um, but for the estimate, you want to, to not show that interdependency uh, so you get uh, the, an accurate assessment of, of how long it will take to do each task. And then you will find that a little bit later in the project. All right. All right. Here is the general approach to, uh, to project estimating. Uh, you first just, you start out with the rough top down type estimate. Again, this is typically to really understand whether the project is worth doing and uh, to understand if, if the funding is available to do the project. Um, then you develop the, the WBS, uh, apply the OBS, the Organizational Breakdown Structure, to that work breakdown structure to understand what areas of the organization will be working on what work packages. And then you'll get those people that are doing the work packages to, to do the estimates, and that's called bottom-up estimate, estimating. From there, you'll be able to uh, to develop schedules and budgets and understand what resources are needed. And then you'll be able to reconcile differences between the top down and the bottom up. There will be some differences, but I think typically uh, they understand that um, based on the, the type of information they use for top down and then the, the more refined uh, estimates used for um, the, in the bottom up uh, estimating process. So there's different methods for estimating project times and costs. We'll start with the top-down approach. First of all, there's the consensus me method that utilizes a pool of experienced uh, uh, senior management or expert judgment to uh, estimate project durations and costs. This is where um, a technique called the Delphi technique may be used. Delphi technique gathers input from experts individually so that the participants don't know who the others are and therefore won't be influenced by those others' opinions. This prevents uh, something called groupthink. Next method is a ratio method. This is also called parametric estimating. Uh, this is where you utilize past data to, um, to estimate project duration and cost. For example, if you if it takes 10 days for one crew to install 1,000 feet of fence, 
that it should be only take one day for 10 crews to install a thousand feet of fence. Another example is when estimating the cost of, of a building, say building a house, uh, oftentimes they'll use, they'll estimate it by dollars per square foot, say uh, $100 per square foot. So now you, you, you times the $100 by the, the 2,000 square feet and you come up with your number. Uh, and then there's the uh, apportion method. Um, using historical data to estimate the projects that, are, that closely follow previous projects. Common uh, use of this is with projects that are relatively standard. Um, in, in a lot of cases, like building a house, um, they're relatively standard. So they'll be able to, um, to use past projects to understand how much it'll cost to build at home. Uh, Function point method used mostly with software projects. Um, it takes uh, major parameters and places uh, some sort of weight on each of them uh, based on the complexity of the parameter. Uh, total adjusted count provides the basis for the labor and cost estimates. And then learning curves. As uh, in, in many projects, there, there are many tasks that are repeated so as, as these tasks are performed, uh, there's a learning curve. People learn better and more effective ways of doing the task. So typically those durations and costs should, uh, should decrease over. Now we'll talk about uh, some of the methods used for the, the bottom-up type approaches. So first uh, item is, is template method. Uh, projects that are, that are similar to past projects can be used uh, to create a starting point. Uh, then you'll note the differences in the new project compared to the past project and adjust the, for those differences. The, uh, the next one is parametric procedures applied to specific tasks, utilizing known data on how much labor is needed to perform a certain task. You can predict or estimate uh, what, it would, what would be needed to, to do the new project. For example, if there's a software conversion project for to be done on, say, 20 computers, by knowing what labor is needed to perform the task on one computer, you can estimate how much labor would be required to, to do it on all 20. The next one is range estimating, generally used when there are there's some sort of unfamiliarity with the work needed to be done, or if it's new technology. Um, this is a popular method, method with software projects or developing new products. The group will give a low average and high estimate, which gives you a range of work to work with. Um, this will help to reduce surprises that may come up due to ambiguity uh, in those work packages. Uh, the next one is just, just a statement, basically, um, these Estimates are, are developed from the details in the work packages. Uh, so based on, on, the, on the tasks um, in your work breakdown structure, um, that's what is generally used to uh, create these, these uh, bottom-up type approaches. And then phase estimating. Phase estimating is used when there is uncertainty around the final product. In this case, there are there's a macro or top-down type estimate done to justify the project and understand the funding needs. The uh, estimates are done in phases so that as the project details become more certain, they can complete the estimate for each phase. 